Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ryan Rampersad, and today I will be talking to you about the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Find the show notes for this episode at the nexus.tv slash SO108. Let's get started. So, like every Samsung Galaxy episode, let's talk about pricing first, and this one begins with a surprise. The pricing for these products changed kind of drastically, surprisingly. Uh, Previously, the S20 line really was expensive. It started sort of at uh, $1,000 and it just crept up from there. And this time, the lineup starts at only $799. But that is the smallest S21 option and it has a plastic back and it doesn't even have all of the camera options that you could ever want. Okay, well, what else is there? Well, of course, you have the mid-range option, which is only $1,000. That's the S21 Plus. And, of course, you have this episode's titular product, which is the S21 Ultra, coming in at $100 less than the Note 20 Ultra of last season at just $1,199. That's great. It, It happened. Finally, we have a S21 Ultra that is a reasonable price. Who am I kidding? It's still insane. All of these products should have been uh, cheaper. $7.99, I think, is a good price for the small one. $9.99, maybe not. That should have really been $8.99. And this one should have actually been $9.99. The, the Ultra should have been $1,000. I think that would have captured the value that uh, having Android and a, a non-eco premium ecosystem would provide. But it didn't highlight that because it was still above the the magic price, which is $1,000. Well, that's enough about pricing. Let's talk about the display next. So the display is great. This is the first S-Line release with adaptive 120 hertz. Well, what does that mean? Well, the Note had it first, and it had kind of a cool feature. It could be 120 hertz when it was being used actively scrolling or playing a game or watching video. But then, in other modes, when you were kind of just letting it sit there, or when it was uh, a game that was locked to uh, 60 frames per second, whatever the case might be, then it would throttle down. Well, that's been brought to the entire S line now for the 21 release. And what's great about it is the Ultra, of course, has to be the standout star here. And it has a very low rate it can go down to tens of refreshes per second, which is great. Whereas the, strangely enough, the phones with worse batteries, in other words, smaller, they are locked to a minimum of 48 hertz uh, as their their minimum rate. So it's interesting that we can go between like 10 and 120, uh, but the phones that really needed that capability can't do it. What else is interesting about the display? Well, we still have the center aligned uh, front facing camera. We're not going to get rid of that, but it is certainly better than where we were with the uh, legendary double cutout from the S10 Plus. Uh, but other things are still kind of remain similar about the S line uh, too. So it is rounded as opposed to the Note, which is boxy. Being rounded makes it look a little bit smaller, which is always quite nice. But a weird thing, the smaller and lower end models, they all have flat displays. But of course, to annoy everybody who wants to pay them the most money, they put a rounded display on this phone yet again. Now, I don't know how some of this newer screen tech works. Does the rounding help them achieve their body size? Does the rounding help them increase yield rates? Does the rounding remain purely an aesthetic choice? to distinguish between the Ultra and the other models? I don't know. Like, is there a reason this has to be round because it has a better screen type internally? Maybe we'll never find out. You know, despite all that, it gets extremely bright. It looks really nice. It's a very fluid experience. You really can tell in extended use and then switching back to something that doesn't have it, that adaptive fresh rate really is a real thing. It is shocking how stuttery smaller frame rates really do look these days. 
Okay, well, let's talk about some of the other physical aspects of the device, such as the build quality and how it looks. So I have been using the Note 20 Ultra prior to this. The S21 Ultra is just heavier. It's it's a it's technically easier to hold because it has a less wide footprint. It's a little taller, so you're not getting punished as much stretching your hand to your phone, but it is just heavier. That battery, which we'll get to in a second, is probably the culprit. It's not a big deal, but it is heavier. Uh, and that weight is always a, always a factor that people don't give it credit for. Now, it's funny. I remember when I pulled this out of the box and I was holding my Note 20, and I was kind of doing a comparison, and it's like, oh my gosh, this phone is adorably small. And, and it, all it takes is a couple of millimeters for that width. Uh, the height can be whatever it wants to be, but the width is really the key factor for me and how big a phone feels. Do you remember the Nexus 6, everybody's favorite megaphone? I don't mean the speaker type, I mean the phone type. Yeah, well, nothing will be that big, but every phone that's a little too big hurts just like that one. So I mentioned the battery. This has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is great. It can last for two days easily. I have... um even neglected it so much as to go on three days because I don't go anywhere anymore. I'm never on 5G. I'm always on my home Wi-Fi and I just, I never, I don't even need to use my phone because I'm always working at home now. So if you, if you have the work at home lifestyle, 5,000 milliamp hours will take you at least two days or uh, a day and a half with um, some moderate use sometimes. It's not a big deal. You'll be fine. But you know, an interesting thing that occurred between the Note 20 Ultra and the S21 Ultra is that they removed the 45 watt option for charging. So you don't get to charge that fast anymore. Even with the wire, even with an actual type C cable that's even rated for it, you don't get to do it anymore. And I noticed this because I bought a highly rated 60 watt cable from Anchor not not more than I don't know, 3 or 4 weeks prior to receiving my S21 Ultra. And I was using it with the Note 20 Ultra, and it was great. It was charging very fast, and, and of course the phones are smart enough these days to stop charging once they're at sort of their threshold, and that's great. Now I just stare at uh, this phone, and I just let it let it charge, and it takes its sweet time. And and again, I'm I'm talking like an hour here to get to a reasonable charge. It does not matter. You'll charge fast, but. It's funny when features like this and, the, you know, there's a regression and you actually notice something. like that. Speaking about charging, one of the reasons I bought that new cable, I even brought a new brick uh, because there is no brick in the box. So if you saw Samsung or any other Android based OEM laughing at Apple for the iPhone 12 series last year, removing allegedly in the name of being green the charger from the box, well, laugh no more, because Samsung copied Apple. No? Yes? Is it great? I don't know. I have a drawer full of inbox peripherals and accessories that I have not touched. I think I used one charger one time because I couldn't find a Type-C charger anywhere else in the house, and I just needed to test something really quick. I use really one charger all the time, and it's the charger that's in my room uh, on my uh, bedside table. It's it's just not a not an issue. I, I can go all day, even when I was actually traveling for work, going to and from different offices. It still wasn't a big deal because then I would have two places to charge. I would charge in my house, again, bedside table, and I would charge in my car because I hook up my phone to Google Maps no matter what I do whenever I'm in my car. Because I'm just I could just get lost even going to the garage now because, again, I just work from home now. So, again. Is it a big deal that 25 watt charging is the standard here? And is it a big deal that the brick isn't in the box? I would argue no, it is not a big deal. And everybody who likes to make fun of Samsung for making fun of Apple now having gone back on that making fun of them, I think you're totally right to do that and you can do that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, a couple more things here in the physical section. We've got ports. Type C is all you need. Ask me how I know. Well, because Samsung said so. Uh... An interesting thing here happens in the speaker section. Nothing actually happened here in the speaker section. It sounds just the same as the Note. It sounds just the same as the S20. 
It's nothing nothing really original or interesting. There are no button changes. There's still no Bixby button. The buttons are still on the right. Um yeah, uh I think I think that's it. I mean it it's a phone. It looks like a phone, acts like a phone. Hey, you know what? One physical thing that I didn't mention is how it actually looks. And that's kind of an interesting thing. So the S20 Ultra had this stupid camera bump. It was just a massive camera bump. The Note 20 Ultra tried to fix that a little bit by kind of making a a jewelry-esque type phone. And kind of what I called it was a Nexus 6P style look and feel. Like it looks gorgeous. It looks jewelry-like because it you know, it has this really, uh, at least the Mystic Bronze version, it has this really metallic look to it. It has a really nice camera bump that isn't um, overly gaudy, especially with no SpaceX, SpaceX, space zoom. So it, it really, it really did, really did make a difference here. Now, that said, the Note 21 series, and specifically the Note 21 Ultra, takes it to an entirely different level. Now, the camera bump is built in to the outer rim, the frame of the phone, or at least that's what they made it look like. And so it's kind of got this um, half-rounded rect. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a shape name for that, but it looks pretty nice. On the back of the phone, uh, you know, it's glass, but the camera itself actually has a, a an aluminum, for those in the know, shell on top. So it 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 uh, doesn't have the cracking uh, sensitivity issues that some of the other uh, larger phones have had lately for their camera bumps. It you know it it's certainly going to still cause a wobble. It's certainly still going to cause um, some center of gravity issues. But overall, I think the design here is refreshingly new and interesting. And it also kind of makes the phone look a little slimmer because the bump is nestled in the corner instead of kind of hanging out, you know, a couple millimeters from the edge. Now, with all that said, if you put a case on this bad boy, that case, if it tries to level out the camera bump with the rest of the phone, you're adding so much material. Not only are you going to add tons of weight, you're going to add tons of material so it's going to feel very thick. What you have is a svelte phone, but what you'll get is a thick phone. So if you want that, add, add, a, add, add a leather case. But if you don't want that, uh, consider something that leaves the camera bump on its own level and kind of just wraps around the phone as tightly as it can. Okay, let's talk about specs, and then we'll get to camera, because I know that's what everybody wants to hear about. Uh, I might even throw software in there too, if I remember specs for this season well we do not have what everybody expected which would be the snapdragon 875 because that is for premium minus products not premium plus no that's wrong what is qualcomm doing well they released the 888 of course everybody knows that 888 or at least the number eight is a really really good and positive number in china i don't know more than that though but it is a very fast processor. There's no 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 speed issues, no performance issues. The camera has, and we'll talk about the camera more, don't worry. The camera has additional capabilities because there's just so much more performance in here and it still sips battery pretty well. So, you know, overall, I don't think there's any really major CPU issues or changes here, but it's still interesting to say that the 875 is a real product and it's for premium minus products. Products that can't have 700 chips but that also can't have 800 chips either. I don't know. I mean, what what is Samsung doing? What is Qualcomm doing? Nobody knows. Now, this could also be the joke that I wrote for the previous episode for the Note 20 Ultra review, where I said, well, they should have paid an extra dollar to get Ultra variant, the 865 Ultra instead of Plus. That would have been funny. Maybe that's kind of what the 888 is for. Maybe they just don't intend really to anybody to buy this, and they'll have a new chip here in just a few months ready for their 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 bigger flagship phones their their folds and flips and flops okay but there's still more to talk about in specs 12 gigs of ram i think that's pretty standard and it's been pretty standard since the uh s i don't know that the is that the note 10 that came with that the first time possibly and every phone since really has had on the ultra side of things 12 
for this season, of course, we have to be a little bit more adventurous. And I believe the Note 20 Ultra had this as an option as well. You can get 16 gigs of RAM if you customize all the way up to either 13 or 14 or $1,500. Please don't do that. But if you did do that, you could also have 512 gigs of storage, which you might want to consider because one of the spec differences between this phone and last year's phone, or even the Note before this, is there's no micro SD card now because of reasons such as price cuts. And of course, I'm doing the air quotes with my hands. This is a podcast and you can't see that. So what does this mean? Well, the base model of the Ultra that I purchased came with 256 gigs of storage, which is fine. And again, that was a standard size back in the Note 10 line plus model. And of course, that's still what we have today. Now, though, we don't have micro SD support at all on any model, even the Ultra. And of course, you know, the Ultra is really for the enthusiasts, I believe. Um, what's going on here? Really? So we asked what uh, Qualcomm was doing, and now we're asking what Samsung's doing here with the storage. Was there a lack of space? Is there additional storage capabilities coming coming soon to alleviate this issue? Is everybody going to the cloud? I don't know, but it's kind of a bad time because even Google Photos is getting storage changes and Samsung Cloud sort of ended support for their photo service. So what gives? Let's talk about software briefly. Uh, I really have no idea what changed in Android 11. Uh, if you'd like to learn about Android 11 though, I happen to have an episode of Second Opinion that is all about that. Uh, please visit the link in the show notes or go to thenexus.tv slash SO106. And you can listen to Ian Arbuck talk all about Android 11, at least the vanilla version. Of course, in the Samsung version, nothing to me is immediately noticeable out of the box. Uh, it looks like you know, one UI as far as I can tell and, you know, performs just fine. So, Android! Camera time. What I said in previous episodes of the Samsung show is that since the Note 10 Plus, the cameras just have not been good. They've been soft. Focus has been hard. There's just been issues. Well, some of those issues have changed and some have been solved even. So I think the focusing issues have been pretty much solved. The, the focusing is fine. Again, this phone, just like the Note 20 Ultra, this S21 Ultra has laser focus capability that really does help focus. Ironically, who would have think that phones that didn't have this in just a couple of years ago had no issues focusing, but now with this crazy laser thing, you know, it can focus better, even though everybody could do it before. Nevertheless, focus is good. Uh, it's also a bit smarter with macro shots now. And you think, well, macro shots? Why are you taking a lot of macro shots? Well, apparently, with all of the phones since the S20 Ultra, pretty much any shot between you and, I don't know, like any regular sized room. So a 10, 10 by 10 room, anything in that field a view would be a macro shot according to this phone. I mean, it just it just is very strange. Taking a picture of something on a table, whether that's your dinner or a can of Diet Coke or uh, an EV plush, which is on my table here for some reason, no matter what you do, you were taking a, what it thought was a macro shot and it was just awful. So what did Samsung do? Did they add a macro lens? No, they did not. What did they do? They added you know, some type of heuristic to detect when you're taking a macro shot. And instead, it would use one of the wide angle lenses to sort of pretend to be a macro lens because it has a wider field of view. It can pretend to zoom in a little bit for you and allegedly can pretend to be a macro lens. Okay, well, I guess that's cool. Um, in practice, I, I do notice it kicking in pretty much whenever I, as I described, taking something, uh, a picture of something that is on a table. It is a real thing. Uh, finally, in the camera section, zoom. Remember space zoom? Well, that's gone. 
not on the back anymore. But in in spirit, it's it's still kind of around. You can still zoom kind of crazy with the with the what what is it called? Periscope zoom, telescope zoom. You can still do that. Um, you can still get pictures of roughly the same quality. It is a lot more stable than it used to be in either the S20 or Note 20 Ultra. It also has some lower end counterparts now. So 3x zoom and 10x zoom modes and the numbers between those have their own lenses dedicated to them now. What that means is you have a special lens for 3x zoom and a special lens for 10x zoom. That's actually really cool because what they maybe did research on and, you know, hopefully they did, is that people really need to zoom with quality between 1 and 3x and then between 3 and 10x. And, you know, maybe the 100x zoom is sort of the gimmicky feature, but the 3 and 10 have enough usable space of scenarios that they're actually worth catering to specifically. Um, and in my in my experience so far, uh, and you know, now it being winter, of course, you know, going outside and taking pictures where you need to zoom a little bit is kind of fishy. Again, macros are what I do apparently. You know, it, it's probably a good choice. We'll see about space zoom if it really matters that it's a little bit more stable, but I think generally the 3x and 10x zoom improvements will be the most noticeable. It's time for final thoughts. Well, this has been a whirlwind tour of an episode, just like the Note 20 Ultra episode. Oh, wow. Let's take a breather here. Did you want an S Pen? Well, you can have one with your S21 Ultra, but without Bluetooth. You can't have one with Bluetooth. The best part of the S Pen. Do you know how great it is to be able to take your phone, put it on a little tripod thing, and take your little pen out and remotely trigger the shutter, that is a killer feature. People would pay you hundreds of dollars to have that feature. Or you could just get a Bluetooth dongle for 20 bucks on Amazon and just hook it up and take pictures whenever you want. Do you really even need that pen? I'm not really sure if I'm selling the pen very well. Uh, well, if you wanted an S Pen on the Ultra, you can do that now. You can get, the, get an S Pen. What's cool about the S Pen for the phone, the S21 specifically, is it is huge it is really uh it's almost a pen in uh this is going to be a funny word for a podcast girth and well it turns out that actually makes it easy to hold it, it it's sort of like how you would expect a nice mechanical pen to feel um you know made out of metal or some premium materials whereas you might feel like the note s pen is kind of stubby like a really cheaply made wood pencil and uh, yeah, what a difference. Now, again, are you ever going to really use the S Pen? I never use the S Pen on my Note, so it's not a big deal for me. Do you want a real Note instead? Well, you might want to consider getting one of those instead of this if you really do want that pen built in, because the Note 20 Ultra might be really the last Note of Note, because the flip and the fold and maybe even the flop which all comment base models priced at about $1,500, those are all going to be the future of the Samsung upper tier lineup. So what are you going to do? Are you going to buy into the S line? Or are you going to buy into the last note line? It's your choice, but you got to make that choice. So in general, and finally, is it an improvement over the phone that it replaces, the S21 Ultra? Yes, I think in general, pretty much in every way. It certainly has a better screen. It certainly has a better footprint. It's a tiny little bit smaller than even that phone. And it has these camera improvements that are certainly noticeable. I mean, it, you know, it has the laser. It has more stability in its uh, periscope telescope zoom. What, like, what, what more can you ask for? It even has a lower price. So in, in, in all accounts, it is certainly better. So what about the Note 20 Ultra? What if you're coming from that? Well, the real question is, why are you doing that? The phones are not distinguishable enough to even bother yet. Uh, if the Note 21 actually emerges from the mysterious cloud of Samsung, you know, consider consider that upgrade. Or at least the S22 Ultra that will surely come out next January. But I, I think it's more of a side grade today from the Note 20 Ultra. And so, yes... Thank you for listening to the S21 Ultra review. 
I know this was very fast and rapid fire, but you now know everything that I know about the S21 Ultra, which is to say it's a phone and it works like a phone. It's pretty good. And that's all for now. Have a good one. You can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, ryanrampersad.com. This show and many of our other shows are licensed under Creative Commons. Visit our subreddit if you'd like to chat with us at reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv if you'd like to support us find us on patreon at patreon.com slash the nexus tv the nexus the nexus the nexus tv podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence, convergence.